I'm Captain Chuck Dyer, the Negotiation Support Team Co-Coordinator. Today I'm joined by Captain Scott Larson, your Negotiating Committee Chairman. Hello, Scott. Afternoon. Scott, uh, during our recent meeting in Washington with the Mediation Board, we were able to establish a schedule uh, for negotiations ongoing and we discussed expectations uh, with the board while we were there. Uh, what can you share with our pilots about that meeting? Yeah, Chuck, on December 3rd, we met with the three members of the NMB, their chief of staff and mediator Mike Tosi. Uh, with us was the NMB, with the NMB was the MEC, the officers and the negotiating committee. We had about a 90 minute session with them where we discussed the process and procedures going forward. After that 90 minute meeting, the negotiating committee met with uh, Mike Tosi, the mediator that's been assigned to our case, and we talked to him in detail about the process going forward. As we enter into this process, we have 12 open sections remaining. And uh, I'd like to walk through those sections. We'll try and keep it simple. We've got a lot to cover here, so we'll just walk through section by section, if okay. you don't mind. So let's just start with uh, section two, definitions. Uh, what can you tell us about that section? Yep, section two, uh, the definition section, is an administrative section. As new definitions come into the contract, uh, if they affect more than one section of the contract, they'll go into section two. And it's kind of a writing committee uh, effort once the full TA has uh, been achieved at the table and the new definitions are incorporated into the contract. Okay, uh, the next section, section three, is compensation. I think most people expect that comes very near the end, but what can you tell us about that? Have yeah. there been any discussions on that? To date, since compensation is an in-game process, uh, no proposals have been passed to date. However, in compensation are things like pay rates, signing bonuses, overrides, and things of that nature. So they usually tend to be an end game once you see the entire contract starting to come together. Okay, uh, section four is uh, one of the work rules or scheduling sections with uh, minimum pay guarantees and other pay provisions in this section. What can you tell us about that? Section four is one of the work rule subgroups uh, along with 12 and 25. And as you can imagine, one of the uh, big issues in Section 4 is the discussion of 4A2B. While the settlement agreement that we achieved post 4A2B last time uh, handles while we're in and coming out of 4A2B, what we're seeking is a hard entry and a hard uh, mechanics of how we would get into any future 4A2B scenario. Also in this section, we're also looking at things like uh, as they relate to reserves and disruptions. Scott, I think some of our people will be surprised uh, to hear that Section 7, the vacation section, uh, is open. Um, can you tell us about that? Sure. The company opened Section 7 back in October of 12 as part of their PBS proposal. They've since made two uh, additional counter proposals uh, relating to other scheduling issues. You know, we know vacation is a very important issue here at FedEx and it's something that we treat very seriously and we will continue to guarantee our vacation system like we have it now. Section 9, miscellaneous flying. Uh, what, what's going on there? Section 9 is uh, a section that deals with the test tech pilots and also more recently the uh, uh, FCA and QA observation uh, program and that's what we're trying to incorporate that into contractual language into Section 9 at this time. Any insurmountable obstacles in that? I don't think there should be at all. Okay. Another area I think that's a little bit surprising to people is Section 11. The training section um, is still open at this time. We're a long way into the process. Why is that the case? You know, the training section has been frustrating from the onset. Uh, we used longtime instructors and Czech airmen as our subject matter experts, literally decades and decades of experience. And we used them to identify the issues that affect not only the instructors, uh, in our ranks, but also the students. We identified the issues, we've tried to address those issues, and some of the problems that we saw result out of the 2006 contract. The hurdle we faced constantly have been the ever-revolving door in flight training management. If we get somebody that's consistent on sitting across from the table, we should be able to negotiate this section in fairly short order. Okay, that's good. Uh, section 12, hours of service, another work rules scheduling section. Uh, what have we got going on there? Yeah, the second of the, of the work rules section, Chuck. Uh, and one of the key pieces of this section is having appropriate science-based language to mitigate fatigue. 
and also to have non-punitive and constructive language in dealing with fatigue. It's very important to us with the kind of schedules we fly around the world, around the clock. The company's seeking to uh, introduce ultra-long range flying. This is a section where it would be uh, addressed. And we're also looking to refine, especially with the 767s being added to our fleet, dealing with augmentation and uh, crew complements in uh, augmented flight. Okay. Uh, section 18, moving along, witnesses and representatives, uh, what's going on there? The Section 18 was partially TA'd as part of the sections in uh, September. The only thing that wasn't uh, concluded at that time was the actual amounts in the flight pay loss banks that we have that cover general flight pay loss and our safety programs. And now a big one, uh, Section 25, the scheduling section. Um, I'm just curious what uh, remains to be done in this section and what our goals are in this section. You know, the three work rule sections are pretty far down the road, uh, in our opinion. Um, our goals is reflected in our current table positions, uh, centered around quality of life, reserves, and the secondary line process. It continues to be a hard area of bargaining uh, as both sides uh, see things differently uh, in, in scheduling and in work rules but we remain steadfast in our goals that uh, we need some quality of life improvements, we need improvements in reserve, and we certainly need improvements to the secondary line process. Okay, now kind of getting one of the heavier sections here for us also is uh, section 27, uh, the insurance section, and I, I know it's critical concern to our pilots and their families, and I'm just curious how you would uh, characterize our current table position on that. You know, the short answer to that is, is simply focused, realistic, and fair. Uh, you know, we understand health care is a big issue nationally. Since the Affordable Care Act came into uh, law in 2010, it's been an ever-changing field. It's a difficult uh, topic uh, of discussion, particularly because the future does remain uncertain. We just had a congressional election. We have another congressional election and presidential election before 2018, which is the earliest that the excise tax could be a player uh, in our health care issues. The rest of it is administratively unclear, and the provisions haven't been written uh, in completion. But you know, when it comes to the ACA, we're mindful that we need to do what's smart and necessary. However, we're not interested in making wholesale changes to our health care plans on the worst case scenarios of something that possibly may or may not happen in the future. Um, it's a shifting uh, sand kind of environment. And we're not interested in doing what the company is seeking to do, which is shift the cost of health care to us. We're, we're acceptable of an increased cost sharing, but not the cost shifting that they're currently seeking in their table positions. I, I'm curious, Scott, the majority of our pilots participate in the buy-up plan right now. Would we accept a, a plan or a group of plans that doesn't include a, a buy-up plan? I don't envision that at all. As we've said all along, options are good as long as they're the right options. Health care is important to our pilots' careers and the well-being of our families. The bottom line is we've heard the pilots loud and clear. They want good health care. They're willing to pay a little bit more for it, but we need the benefit to remain the same, if not better. Okay. We're up to Section 28, the retirement section. Uh, we know this has become a contentious section. Uh, what can you say about the difference between our position and management's? Well, Chuck, quite simply, the company hasn't addressed our overall retirement package in any meaningful way. They're focused on new hires almost exclusively, and they need to look at us, the pilots on the property, and have a balanced approach to our current retirement system like we have. There are some improvements that are needed. You know, we have an aging crew force, many of whom are nearing retirement. They don't have the luxury of time to benefit from some other system or some other style of retirement. Companies to recognize these long-term employees with a comprehensive retirement package they've earned providing their services to this corporation. Section 31, Scott, uh, duration. Obviously this will be done at the end of bargaining, but what can you tell us about that? Sure, if pay rates are an in-game uh, section, duration certainly is. And as duration is usually uh, one of the last things as both parties see the package come together and see what the overall benefit is, then uh, a appropriate duration is usually selected at that time. And it does affect the overall uh, cost of the contract. Scott, uh, management has uh, repeatedly stated that our proposals are not reasonable. Uh, what's your reply to that? <laughs> 
My reply is I wholeheartedly disagree with that. You know, our positions are based on what we bring to the table 24-7, 365 to this great corporation. You know, we're seeking modest improvements in focused areas of this contract within the current structure. We're not seeking wholesale changes and rewrites of major sections of this contract. Far from it. We're trying to operate within the current structure that we all know. Our base contract is good, but there is room for improvement in it, and that's what we're seeking. What can our pilots do to support the negotiating committee? Well, as always, Chuck, they need to stay informed and stay engaged like they have been. Uh, we're entering a new phase of negotiations now with the NMB, but uh, continued pilot support is critical at this phase in the process. Continue to seek answers from uh, reliable sources. Tell your block reps what you think. And above all, watch videos like this and you know, seek the information from those reliable sources. Show up at events when we host them. That's the best thing that a line pilot can do to support us at the table. We'll get the contract we deserve and that we've earned with that support. Well, thanks, Scott. Appreciate you stopping by. And you guys out there, just keep doing what you're doing. You heard it here. Uh, your support is deeply appreciated, and it is the thing that will bring this process to a successful conclusion. I appreciate you taking the time to view this video, and I just want to remind you, stay informed, stay engaged.